Clustering data using the k-means clustering algorithm is really simple to implement and can be very effective in reality. To begin using the k-means clustering algorithm, we first need to import the proper libraries. Import the k-means from the sklearn cluster library. Import the silhouette score from the sklearn metrics library. And import the standard scalar from the sklearn preprocessing library. After you've imported the proper libraries, then load your data set. The data set I'm using in this video is fake data, but what it is, is it shows the annual income of customers and the spending score of customers that have visited a store, where the customer spending score ranges from one being the worst to 99 being the highest. What I like to do next is before I implement any k-means um, clustering algorithm, I like to visualize the variables to see if I can determine how many cluster or how many clusters the algorithm might choose. And so I'm just going to create a scatter plot that plots the annual income variable along the horizontal axis and the spending score variable along the vertical. And what I like to do is I just like to visualize and see how many clusters can I can I see in this scatter plot. When looking at this scatter plot, I see possibly five clusters. So I see a cluster up here, a cluster down here, a cluster in the middle, and a cluster here and a cluster there. So possibly five clusters. But there could also be some additional clusters, like maybe k-means might cluster these four data points together or these five data points. So I think at least there are five clusters within this data set when just looking at this visually. Another good thing about looking at the data visually is you can see that the annual income scale ranges from 20,000 to 140,000, while the spending score only ranges from zero to 100. Since k-means uses distance when calculating the clusters, it's always recommended to scale your data. That way, annual income doesn't bias the clusters because the range is so much greater than the spending score range. So the next step is to always standardize your data. So we're going to standardize the data by using the standard scalar function, and we're going to standardize our annual income and our spending score variables. We're then going to save those standardized variables into two new variables, one called annual income stand, and the other called spending score stan. And when you look at those, you can see that annual income has been standardized and spending score has been standardized. So now that they're on the same scale, when we go to run the k-means clustering algorithm, there shouldn't be any bias or any uh, outliers that are affecting the k-means clustering algorithm. So the big decision with k-means for the user is how many k's or how many clusters does the algorithm create? We don't really know that. So the best way I found is to create a loop that loops through and calculates the total variance and the silhouette score for multiple K values. So I've created a variable or a blank vector called tote var and another blank vector called silhouette. I then set up our starting K to start at two clusters and to end at 15. So what it's gonna do is this for loop here is going to iterate through the data and it's gonna start with two clusters and iterate through by one cluster all the way up to 15. And then it's going to fit the k-means to each of those k-values. And then it's going to calculate a silhouette score and the total variance for each of those k's. So when you run this, it might take just a couple seconds, depending on how many k-values you chose. But you won't see anything. But what we're going to do is we're going to plot the outputs of that for loop. So the first output we're going to plot is the elbow plot. And as you can see here, what it does is it plots the total variation on the vertical axis and for each K value on the horizontal. And what we're looking for in an elbow plot is where the plot bends or makes the elbow. So as you start at two clusters, you can see the total variance is really high. And as you add more clusters, the total variance decreases. But what we're looking for is that sweet spot where the total variance has decreased by a lot. And then after it, there's some diminishing returns. So when you look at this, where, the where this plot bends is right around six clusters. When we go from five to six, there's a really big drop off in the variance. And then when you go from six to seven, seven to eight, there's very little uh, variance drop off. So it looks like the sweet spot of this is six. But sometimes the elbow plot can be hard to really determine what is the most optimal K to use in the K-means cluster mean algorithm. So using a second plot called the silhouette score usually kind of helps set that, figure out what is the most optimal K to use. So again, this shows for each K value that we ran in our loop, what is the silhouette score? And what we're looking for is the maximum silhouette score. So when we look at the plot, it looks like the max silhouette score is at six. So the silhouette score showing six clusters is the most optimal. Our elbow plot up here is showing six clusters is also the most optimal. So if we had to guess, 
we're going to say six clusters is the best uh, number of clusters to use. But sometimes using a table might be the most easiest. So this is a way to use a table. The first column here is the K value followed by the total variation and the silhouette score. So if we look at six here, we can see that the total variation drops from 98 to 55 and then slowly goes down after that. And the silhouette score looks like it maxes out at K equals six here of 53. So again, using six looks to be the most optimal number of clusters to create for this data set. We can then create our final uh, k-means clustering using our six clusters that we determined. So we're going to create a variable called k-means, and we're going to um, stuff into that variable the k-means clustering algorithm. So we'll use the k-means function, and within the function, we're going to specify n clusters equals six. And then there's a lot of different options you can choose, but I chose to use k-means plus plus and then auto. After you've set up your cluster, we're then going to fit it to our annual income standardized variable and our spending standardized variable. After you've run the k-means algorithm and fit it to the data, you should see a little blue, maybe a gray box that outputs showing that you successfully ran the k-means. Then what I like to do is I just like to apply the clusters to the data set. And so we're going to use the k-means predict function and we're going to predict the clusters for our standardized variables and then stuff them into a new column called clusters. And the reason I do this is so you can do some data analysis on those clusters. You could look at what is the average or the median income by cluster? What is the spending score or median score by cluster? How many customers are in each cluster, et cetera. So you can do some real good data analysis when you apply the clusters to your data set. The last thing I like to do then is I like to just visualize all six clusters using that same scatter plot we created up above in the video. So when you run the scatter plot and look at all six groupings here, you can see that there's one grouping here, a grouping here, group in the middle, one big one down here, and it looks like our k-means actually split this top group into two different groups. So when we started the video, we used the same scatter plot, and we thought there's probably five groups at least, and it looks like the most optimal was six, and it split this top group in half. That was a simple walkthrough of how to implement and use a k-means clustering algorithm. If you liked this video, I'd appreciate it if you could like it and head over to my channel at Reasonable Data Science to find more data science videos.